The China Lake Murders is a 1990 made-for-basic cable thriller directed by Alan Metzger and starring Tom Skerritt, Michael Parks, Nancy Everhard, Doug Mears, Lauren Tews, and Bill McKinney. The film opens with a thin blue line. Okay, I'm going to hand out some teletype stuff now, and I want you to read it this time. Teletype? Donnelly, 7M66. <clears throat> Donnelly? This is Donnelly's vacation starts today. We'll call Maggie. Let's get a replacement yeah. in here. Is there really a sign seating in a ship change like this? You know I'm going to do it. We get some gonzo driving and hey, it's Michael Parks. He thinks she's drunk and we get the DUI Olympics featuring lime walking, nose touching, and being handcuffed and thrown into your own trunk. Then he fucking leaves. Is he coming back? We then find Sheriff Brody at the trailer park on a domestic violence call. Look, I hate to cause you guys all this trouble. We know there's women. If you don't knock them around, then you get yourself to that white beating center in the valley. You hear me? This will not be the last time we are at this residence. Let's back to the station. and This guy is looking for his wife, who I guess is still locked in the trunk of her car in the desert. In another part of town, Donnelly is gaslighting this waitress. I'm a writer. A writer? Well, how was I ever going to figure that out? Well, if you examine me closely, you would see that as a callus right here, see? Hey! Hey, give me that on the menu. Leave me alone! Leave me alone! Here! Ah! 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 Holy shit, he's trying to drown that guy in a soda fountain! Look, it's a hamburger. Some more coffee? Coffee. Coffee down. Oh, it was all a daydream. Yeah, might have known. How do you know which car was theirs? This sandwich tastes like shit. He found it while taking a piss. That's some police work. They popped the trunk to find a freshly baked corpse. Bill McKinney! Hopefully in this film he doesn't ask any prostitutes what it's like to be a whore. The state police blow Brody off and he goes home in time to call his kids for some background on his home life. Look, there's a couple more seconds I can see in the dark. Walk over to the car with your hands where I can see them. Hey, where I'm from, that's not a crime. For being a cop, Donnelly doesn't realize that serial killers may want to keep a low profile. Donnelly spends the night in jail with Brody discovering that he's a cop the next morning. I got 24 years in on the force, and if you bust me, they can shut my pension down cold, and I go out with nothing. You know I'm not going to do it again. Hey, how you going? No fucks given. He ends up letting him off the hook and drives him to his ride. The hell is this, a horror movie? Yeah. They become fast buddies. What the Bermuda wants? I don't know, what was that like? A lot of black. Whoa! He drops him off again and whoops, I'm late. Wait, that's not his kid? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. We'll never see his kid or his ex-wife in the remainder of the film. I really wanted to see her strike his ass out. Then Dolly shows up. How did he know that he would be at the baseball diamond in the middle of the night? And Brody offers him a place to stay. I'm gonna take a shower. You can take one too. 
or we can take one together and save water. Damn. Yep, those are press. Then they fornicate! I'm seriously waiting for her to ask if he graduated with her dad. Meanwhile, Donnelly rummages through Brody's house. The next day, exposition! Big city cop looking over the edge of everything. Street, home. I heard about this small community where the sheriff was hanging up his badge. I thought that might be a way back. Then Brody learns of a number of disappearances over the years. Elsewhere, Donnelly is practicing river dance in the desert. Convenient! My lucky day. No shit! Does he really get to take a police motorcycle on vacation? What are you doing? Thunk. And it turns out that Dolly goes back to Brody's place. People have been getting murdered on the roads outside of town. And it goes back five years. I think I got a worker. You mean psycho? Gotta be. If you need any help, I'm not doing anything. Oh hell, this is gonna turn into a poor man's Hamble Lecter, isn't it? They head out into the desert and follow some odd tracks. Three assholes in a jeep alert. Donnie's gonna come with me. You stay here, Bobby. I'm the deputy, Sam. You I should go here. too. Always a bridesmaid, pal. They search the camp, and as they're leaving, what are you doing? He ain't gonna shoot us. Did have kill us if he wanted to. Then why bother shooting you at all? You didn't even know he was there. What's the point? They take a walk and discover the car. Holy shit, he's still alive. They reach the road and Brody sees this. I'm getting the fuck out of here. Brody starts checking into Donnelly and Bobby walks up on this. Sorry, dude. We can add this scene to the horribly acted death pile. I drive the right center field and hit deep, and Andy Murray has hit it out. Does Major League Baseball know you're using that audio? Whoa. I didn't know you were here. Hey, he broke in. You shoot his ass, run credits. Brody starts trying to pick apart his story and they go out and waste some good beer. Ha! You're supposed to shoot at empty beer cans, dumbass! We copy. Let us know if you need any backup there. Over. 10-4. Can you imagine how expensive everything would be if God had made Mexico? <laughs> Jesus, what a fucking racist! What'd you, what'd you tell him? <laughs> you said that in front of the cops? That's fucking stupid! Then Brody beats his ass, but Donnelly calms the situation. Brody finds out about Bobby, then Brody tries to kick Donnelly's ass. What about Wednesday afternoon? Wednesday afternoon, I went shopping, looking for a toy for my nephew at Kmart in Reno. Kmart? And I bet it looked the same then as it does now. He gets some shitty alibis and nothing can be done, but we do get some more gratuitous Bill McKinney. At Bobby's funeral, what a ballsy cocksucker! Or I can hang around room 37. I can do anything I want, Sam. It's out there. It don't happen out there. It's all that garbage start building up, getting deeper and deeper. You know what I mean, Sam? The system doesn't work anymore. It works. That's pretty much an admission of what you're doing. And you've told local law enforcement where to look. 
Donnelly goes to pick up the waitress from an hour ago. So is he going to kill her for some reason after killing the guys that harassed her early in the movie? You Buster. I used to have two cats. Buster and Crab. Named for Buster Crab. Flash Gordon! And apparently everyone is getting it on that night. I gotta get the fuck out of here. Thanks for the lay. The next day, Donnelly finds Cindy broken down on the side of the road and goes into his usual action. But he gets busted by Brody because you told him exactly you would be killing people, you ass. Unless he wanted to get caught, but this movie doesn't explain any of that shit. Brody holds him at gunpoint until the cops arrive. Then this happens. And he's fucking dead. This film was dull as shit. It was one of the earlier tries by the USA Network to have their own original movies that they would eventually dump on late night television. Does USA still make their own movies? Who cares? Michael Parks and Tom Skerritt are good in this with what they have to work with. Which isn't much. Park's character isn't really well written, because if he's been doing this for years, did he just suddenly decide to leave the bodies where they can be found? Because these were only missing persons cases when Tom Skerritt discovers them, so... Hmm? That pretty much means the Skerritt character really isn't a better cop. He just lucked down a guy getting fucking sloppy in his work. Maybe he should have called in a psychic like he did when he was sheriff up in Castle Rock. The funny thing is, they only actually mention China Lake once in this entire film, and we never see a lake. Just desert, desert, and desert. Yeah!